Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. You have no idea just how excited I am for this video. Today, I'm gonna be matching the Bridgerton characters to perfumes. I'm gonna be focusing on the women in this video because I don't know that much about cologne, to be honest. So before we get into this video, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing down below and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. I have to tell you guys, I am obsessed with Bridgerton as many of us are. I actually was so impatient for the next season that I started reading the books. So I am almost completely done with the first book and I also bought the second book. But anyways, we're gonna get into these perfumes. I do wanna say quickly though, you guys, I just did a reel the other day that kind of has like a Bridgerton theme or is related to Bridgerton. And I'll link my TikTok down below as well as my Instagram because it's on both of those platforms if you guys want to check it out or even if you just want to check out those platforms in general, I would really appreciate your support. But I'm going to start with the one that kind of inspired this video because since I was reading the book, Simon always talks about Daphne's scent and I was kind of trying to think about what she would wear and I thought about this perfume. I will say though right away, this is not the perfume that in the end I ended up pairing with Daphne because I don't think that it fits her the best. I think there's another perfume here that fits her even better. But the only reason I really thought of this one is because it's the one perfume in my collection that really captures the essence of that sort of time. Like I picture this on a woman in that time, the bottle, the scent, everything about it. And that is Insolence or Insolence by Guerlain. This bottle is absolutely stunning. It's like this frosted classic Guerlain bee bottle with the pinky purpley juice. This one is the Eau de Toilette version. I have never smelled the EDP and I honestly don't really care to. I really like this one. Now the person that I paired this perfume with is Edwina because I honestly feel like this is her in a perfume like to the T. It's sweet, but innocent and soft and clean. And it's just like the essence of the perfume that I would picture Edwina in. So this is what I chose for her. This is predominantly a violet perfume, but there's some like red berries and some powdery notes and stuff in here, but really it just smells like sweet candied violets but not overpowering, it's soft and it's slightly powdery. It has a clean scent to it and it really smells innocent and sweet and pretty. And even though I love the scent so much and I don't think it smells old lady-ish at all, I do see this on someone in the 1800s. Like it just has this sort of almost vintagey feel to it, but in the best way. Just in case you've never heard of this perfume before, I want to say it because I feel like it needs to be said along with describing this perfume. Someone on YouTube, her name is Gabriella Francesca, she kind of made this perfume very popular because she raved and raved about it in a video and said it smells like if fairies gave you a bath and like use their soap this is what it would smell like and honestly it really does have that sort of scent because it's like this clean plush soft sweet violet but like i said has that vintage sort of vibe to it that you would picture on someone in that time and i just i feel like this is truly edwina in a perfume so i probably wouldn't have started with her character if it wasn't for this perfume just because i feel like this is kind of what inspired this video and i will say i did try my best to pick perfumes that weren't totally modern Obviously, these perfumes are all wearable and most of them are newer releases, but I didn't want to pick perfumes that they would never have worn back then, like Britney Spears Fantasy or something. I just didn't feel like that really fits the vibes of the show and the time frame, if you know what I'm saying. So anyways, moving on, I will tell you guys my perfume for Daphne in a second, but first I want to talk about Kate because she was obviously such a huge part of season two and... I know that a lot of us preferred season two to season one, at least personally I did. And then I saw a few people say that afterwards. I just felt like it really captured me and like engrossed me and just like really, really stole my heart. So the perfume that I chose for Kate, I wanted something that was feminine and sophisticated, but still sort of had like a warm, sensual vibe to it because I feel like 
her personality isn't as like soft and sweet as Edwina's. So the perfume that I picked for Kate is Lanterdit. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this one, but this is by Givenchy. And it's kind of funny because this perfume was actually created in like the 60s or something for Audrey Hepburn. This was like supposed to be her original like personal scent. They have reformulated it since then, but it still has sort of a vintage elegance to it. Obviously not dating back to the 1800s, but still it, it has the vibe that I was looking for. And this one, so in the opening, when you just smell it right out of the bottle, it has a little bit of like a grapiness. It's kind of sweet, but once you spray this on your skin, this truly is a warm floral. It is predominantly tuberose. I believe it's in here, and generally I don't like tuberose, but in this perfume, it smells so freaking good, you guys. It, it just like captures your senses. It's warm and sexy, but in a very sophisticated, elegant way. And I love that it's a warm floral because that's really what I would picture Kate in for some reason. I just picture her in like a warm floral perfume. And I feel like this is the perfect one because like I said a hundred times, it has that elegance and that femininity, but it also has a sensual warmth to it. And the grapey opening is not what you might think. It's not juvenile or like too young, although it does add like youthfulness to it, but it still has that warm, it doesn't smell anything like Flower Bomb, so I hesitate to compare it to Flower Bomb, but it's kind of that same type of category of like a warm floral that's like really attractive and seductive and oh my gosh, this is just like to me and to my nose, the perfect perfume for Kate, at least in my personal collection, because I feel like it has that perfect balance and it's just so intoxicating that's like a great word to describe this perfume is intoxicating so next let's move on and talk about the lovely Daphne so like I said I had originally thought of the Ensolence perfume for her but when I really gave it some more thought I feel like Daphne isn't quite as innocent as all that yes she is maybe in the beginning of the show or the books or whatever but she has a fire and a wit and she's just more than that sweet innocent girl so I wanted to talk about Delina for her and I don't have a full bottle of Delina so I'll pop a picture on the screen I do have a little decant here though because I have to have at least a little bit of this fragrance with me. It smells so good. It's just really pricey and it's not one I wear all the time. But this perfume, again, I feel like it's such a perfect pick for Daphne because this perfume is so unique. It really does smell like a beautiful feminine perfume. It has peony, it has rose, lychee, and so it has just this really bright fruity floral tone to it. But it's not generic by any means. This has a very unique twist to it. There's nutmeg in this, there's some incense in there, and this rhubarb note that makes it a little bit tangy, but when you just smell this and put this up to your nose, this is a powerful perfume. I will tell you that right now. It is very strong. It lasts forever. It projects like crazy. It's probably one of the best performing perfumes in my collection, but it also has this soft, feminine like beautiful quality about it that is so breathtaking like it truly is but it has more than just this you know bright floral tone because you have like those deeper notes in there that make this like really really sexy and seductive and it's like beautiful and classy and almost innocent at the same time as being like sensual and intense. This perfume is so many things all at once. And I just feel like it's Daphne from how she is in the beginning of the story to how she is at the end of the story. Just because it has so many different facets to it where it manages to smell pure and seductive at the same time. It's such a masterpiece, really it is. Um, okay, I'm talking about these perfumes for way too long and I really want to get through all the characters Maybe let's like kind of move away from the super main characters for just a second And talk about someone that is a little bit more in the background But I feel like I have the perfect perfume for her So I wanted to mention her and that is Genevieve Delacroix 
the modiste woman in the show that like does everyone's dresses and things. I am sorry if I mispronounced her name. She has this really like mysterious kind of like sensuality to her. She's really like sophisticated and well put together. She doesn't lose her temper. At least you don't see that happen in the show. She has a really just like calm but like intense vibe about her. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but the perfume that I chose for her is Coco Noir by Chanel. And I really feel like this describes her because it's mysterious and sophisticated and dark, but it, it has like a femininity to it as well. And there's some really beautiful floral notes in here. I think this bottle is just truly beautiful. It's like this black classic Chanel bottle with the gold lining and it is honestly so gorgeous. I think these are the two prettiest bottles in my collection if I had to say. But yeah, there's not really too much that I have to say about this honestly because it is what it is. I think it fits her so well. Yeah, I just feel like this is how she would smell. And yeah, it looks like how the bottle looks, honestly. It's dark, mysterious, intoxicating. It's not like it's masculine or anything. Um, it's definitely feminine, but in a little bit of a more unique twist. And yeah, like I said, mysterious is a good way to describe this one. And I feel like she is that. So that is Coco Noir from Chanel. And I think this is a good match for Genevieve Delacroix. All right, let's talk about Eloise because this I think would have been a little bit of a harder one for me if I hadn't just immediately thought of this perfume that I have that probably fits her better than anything else in my collection and possibly anything else in general. And that is Jo Malone Blackberry and Bay. And funnily enough, this is actually a cologne or like a unisex perfume. And the reason I chose this for her is because this perfume, I've always described it as being like the cool down to earth girl perfume. Like this is the girl that wouldn't really generally wear perfume, if that makes sense. And I feel like that fits her really well because you know, even though she's not the most chill person on the planet, she is very down to earth and fun and she wouldn't be the type of girl that would really necessarily be like that obsessed with things like perfume. But this perfume, mm, it has this femininity to it, even though it could be unisex because it has this fresh, clean scent, but there's also this like natural fruitiness from that blackberry in here that it smells like you just picked fresh blackberries. It mixes a little bit with that herbally tone from the bay, but there is also like cedarwood, I think, and grapefruit in here. So it kind of gives it like this juiciness, but also a woody undertone. And like I said, this really is like that cool down to earth girl that isn't that obsessed with all things beauty, but you know, this is just how she smells. And if she were to wear a perfume, this is what it would be. So. I thought this was a great pick for Eloise and it's honestly the first thing that came to my mind when I thought of her. If you guys watch my channel, you know I'm truly obsessed with this perfume. It's one of my like ride or die favorite perfumes because it's so versatile, it's such an easy reach. You just smell nice. This is actually my husband's favorite perfume on me. Generally, he likes warmer perfumes I found, but for some reason, even though this is the farthest thing from a warm perfume, this is the one that he compliments me on the most because it's just not too intense and it's so nice. And if you're sensitive to scents, this one is really good. It's also very unique. I don't have anything that smells like this because it's so natural and realistic smelling. So Blackberry and Bay by Jo Malone for Eloise. And then I had a little bit of a hard time choosing a specific perfume for Penelope, but I knew that I wanted something vanilla and sweet because honestly, I couldn't think of anything else for her. I have no idea why. For some reason, I just picture her wearing vanilla and I also didn't really pick out a vanilla perfume for any of the other characters. So I kind of felt like vanilla was just what I should pick for her. I have to say I had a hard time though picking a specific one because I have perfumes that have vanilla in them that I could maybe picture. Like the Billie Eilish perfume, that one's warm and vanilla, but it also has a little bit of an aromatic twist to it. Okay you guys, the lighting might have changed in the clip because my camera just stopped recording and I had to restart it. But anyways, what I was saying about Penelope, I blanked and I can't remember what other vanillas I was gonna mention. I can't even think of any right now, but the one that I ended up choosing because this is a very typical, sweet, like vanilla extract type of scent 
is the Vanille Eau de Toilette Perfume from Outrimmer. You can get this on Anthropology or Amazon and a few other places as well. But the, even though this is an EDT, it's actually very, very long lasting and has really good performance. And this, it really is very sweet. So that's the only thing about this. I think if I had a perfume that was maybe a little bit less sugary, like maybe Kaoli Vanilla 28, that might be a better one, although I don't have that one. So I'm just gonna talk about this because this is like one of the only like predominantly vanilla perfumes that I have. It's vanilla extract, but very, very sweet and sugary. So. Mm, it smells so so good. It's so warm perfect for obviously fall and winter, but can also be warm Any time of the year. I just feel like this fits Penelope because like I said, I picture her in a vanilla and That's really all I have to say about that. I don't know why this is such a good one. You guys it's such a cheapy too It's under $20 and it has such good performance and it smells so so good So then let's talk about the perfume that I chose for violet Bridgerton. Obviously that is the Bridgerton mother, if you guys didn't know. And I wanted to choose something elegant and sophisticated for her, but not like dark or too intense or anything. So I chose one that I personally love a lot, a lot. This is one of my favorites. And I just have a travel size of this one as well, but I will be getting a full bottle when I run out because it's that good. This is Mason Francis Kirk Dijon Amorous Femme. And I have talked about this a few times on my channel, but I don't know why I haven't talked about it more, to be honest, you guys. I did do a whole review video on it if you haven't checked it out because it went viral on like TikTok and Twitter. It has some citrus notes in there. It's got iris and possibly violet in there. So it has this floral, slightly powdery tone to it. It also smells clean. There's a little bit of woodiness and then the amorous note is what people say they can smell the most But honestly, I've never smelled amorous so I wouldn't know but I'm assuming if that's what you smell the most It's not an overpowering scent because this doesn't have anything off putting in it to my nose It just smells so nice so nice not anything too overpowering, but it also doesn't smell generic. It's a little bit different than the everyday perfume like this. It just really smells so, so beautiful and expensive. Like this, this just really does smell expensive for like a modern day perfume. And, and also if it would have been worn in that time, it just smells so beautiful and elegant. And like I said, it's a citrusy, woody floral and it's just what I picture Violet Bridgerton wearing, to be honest. And it was another one that was a fairly easy pick for me because I just feel like it is a calm, put together, clean woman. So that is Amorous Femme. Love that one so much. Truly a gem in my collection and one that I hold very close to my heart. Now we have to talk about Lady Danbury because this was so hard for me. I kept going back and forth. I don't feel like I have the perfect perfume for her in my collection because I feel like she's just intense. And if she were a modern day woman, I would say something like alien, but that is so synthetic and modern that I just can't picture it on someone in the 1800s. So I just couldn't pick alien. Um, I almost chose Coco Noir, but I decided it went better with Genevieve and I thought one that might go with her pretty well is Guess Seductive Noir. So this is actually said to be like a dupe for Mon Guerlain by Guerlain, but it's a little bit spicier and darker and a little bit more mysterious. So I felt like that was perfect for Lady Danbury because I don't think I would quite picture her in Mon Guerlain. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't fit her at all, but I just think it's a little bit more subdued. Whereas this one has that same vibe to it, but it's a little bit, like I said, spicier, darker, more mysterious. And so I thought it would be good to pair with her. It's also way, way cheaper. You can find this for literally so cheap. I got this bottle for $16 and I would say definitely don't pay more than 20 for it because you can find it for less. It really smells so, so good. It's definitely, to my nose, a nighttime perfume. I mean, I feel like she would have worn this all the time, but yeah, it's so, so good. Very, like I said, similar to Mon Guerlain, but more fitting for her. I couldn't talk about every single woman in this show, so I tried to pick the ones that I felt like stood out the most. Let me know in the comments if I missed anyone. I really hope I didn't, but honestly, if I did and you feel like 
you have a perfume that would fit them, leave it down there along with their name. I think that would be very interesting to read. Um, you can also just let me know in general which perfumes you would pair with these people. I do not, I won't feel offended at all if you guys disagree with me. This is just my personal opinion from my collection. So last person we have here is Marina Thompson. This was a little bit hard, but also not at the same time. I kind of feel like her personality is a little bit hard to read. So I kind of wanted to just put her with something feminine and simple. I don't feel like she would put a ton of time or thought into the most extravagant perfume. I have two here actually to mention. The first one here is Crystal Violet Musk from KKW. This is actually a brand new bottle because their website is shutting down and I know they're bringing it back in a different like form. They're gonna combine some things I think, but I don't know if they're bringing this back. So I wanted to get it back up and I definitely recommend that if you guys wanna try this to do so as well if the website is still up because it's such a good perfume. Even though this is called Crystal Violet Musk, there's actually lavender in here, and it is a clean lavender, kind of powdery, sweet, almost like marshmallowy type of perfume, but it's clean as well. And it doesn't smell overly like herbally lavender. It's just a nice, pretty lavender. It smells really, really good. And kind of one of those like fresh out of the shower scents, but a little bit more unique and like sweet as well, not just clean. The other perfume that I kind of wanted to mention for her really quickly is Daisy Oh So Fresh Twinkle by Marc Jacobs. This is like the least vintagey bottle that I have here, but it also gives off the same like simple, pretty, feminine, clean vibes. This one though does have violet in it, and it also is more tart and fresh than the Crystal Violet Musk. This one is just simply more clean, fresh, fruity with that added violet note so it has a little bit of powdery floral but it's just a nice simple perfume it smells really really good and this one is great for the springtime and i love the bottle even though it definitely would not have existed in the 1800s but anyway you guys that is all of the perfumes that i had to talk about i hope that you enjoyed this video it was kind of a little bit different for me but i had so so much fun planning it and filming it i know it's going to be so long but i felt like i wanted to really describe each perfume really well. I know that I didn't go in depth about each character and their role, but I feel like if you're watching this video, then you've watched Bridgerton or read the books and you know who the characters are. Although I will say the book does not, at least the first one does not really show much at all about the other characters. They're just mentioned and the show goes much more in depth with the other characters. But anyways, like I said, I feel like if you're watching this video, you already know who the characters are. But that is gonna be it. Um, let me know if you disagree with me in the comments. Like I said, I will not take offense at all. I'd love to hear your opinions and suggestions and all of that. Let me know what else you wanna see from me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, you guys, check out my main channel if you have not yet. It is linked down below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.